Beef. It's what's for dinner. If you make these slow braised beef short ribs, that is. Glistening and tantalizingly tender, they pair perfectly with a creamy parmesan cheese packed polenta. It's comfort food, but with a sense of style. We'll begin by taking the top off of a carrot here, and no, I don't see the point in peeling carrots. There's a lot of good stuff in there. You can cut off those little fibers if you want to, but you do you. I'm gonna give it a little base so that it doesn't rock around on me, and then cut some nice thin planks here. Once we got that done, we'll stack two or three of those planks back up and cut them into a nice julienne. No, that's not someone's name. It is a particular knife cut. Go back through into a fine dice known as a brunoise. I'm telling you friends, knife skills will unleash your true potential in the kitchen. Cut up two to three medium carrots and then turn your attention to one medium yellow or white onion. Go ahead and give that a nice dice as well. Just try and keep it an even size, doesn't have to be super fine because this is going to cook for a long time uh, braising in the oven. Once you've got your onion all chopped up, get that into a bowl with some carrots and turn to a plate with about a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. These are our beef short ribs. I've got four here. Serving size could be one to two, depending on your appetite. You can see that nice, really well marbled beef that's gonna get super succulent as it cooks low and slow in the oven. We wanna coat all sides with that all-purpose flour and then just set them aside. Over medium high heat, add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to a braiser or skillet. Add your carrots and onions. Season those, of course, with fresh cracked pepper and salt and then sweat them out for about four to five minutes until they're just starting to soften and turn translucent, the onions at least. At that point, we'll go ahead and crack in one or two cloves of garlic and give that another 30 to 60 seconds for that garlic to soften and begin to get fragrant. And at that point, we can go ahead and remove the carrots and onions, put them back in that same bowl, no need to dirty another dish up. Once you've got them removed, add in a couple more tablespoons of oil for maximum heat transfer and place in your short ribs. If you're making a large batch of these, you may have to work in batches. Try not to overcrowd the pan. We do want to get at least some nice brown color on these ribs. Probably three or four minutes of cooking time, then give them that flip. Three or four minutes more. We're looking to get a nice color here. We are obviously not going to cook them through at this point, but color is flavor. We'll season them up with a little salt and pepper. And once they've had three or four minutes on that second side, go ahead and get them out. Now, look at that beautiful fond. We have got to do something with that, and here's what we're going to do. We're gonna add our softened onions and carrots back to the party, along with a tablespoon of tomato paste for depth of flavor and acidity. Work that in and cook it out for about a minute or two. And now we are going to declaze this party with a cup of good quality red wine. I think a Cabernet is probably best here, but Merlot would work as well. And now just scrape, scrape, scrape all that brown stuff. Once you've released most of that fawn from the bottom of your pan, we're gonna shake in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and go in with two cups of beef stock. Return your short ribs to the braising liquid and our final flavoring notes here will be a fresh sprig of rosemary. No need to peel it or chop it. We can pull it out later. And a couple of uh, sprigs of fresh thyme. Make sure everything is evenly distributed. Lid this bad boy up. And it's gonna go into a 300 degree oven for two and a half hours with the lid on. And then for an additional 30 to 45 minutes with the lid off. The reason for removing that lid at the end will soon be apparent because we want it to look like this. That liquid shall reduce down. You're gonna get a beautifully dark mahogany brown crust on the outside of that beef and a luscious beef fat infused red wine and beef stock reduction. Beautiful. Lid that back up and we can turn our attention to our Parmesan polenta, which will begin with four cups of chicken stock. I prefer unsalted, helps me control the seasoning as I go, but use whatever brand you prefer. Get that all into a pot, add in three to four cloves of minced garlic, bring it to a simmer, and then slowly, or attempting to be slow, uh, shake in one cup of fine ground yellow cornmeal. 
If you get a few lumps in there, it is not the end of the world, but do try and break them up as you are whisking it. It's gonna cook out for about 15 to 20 minutes and a lot of those lumps will kind of break apart. But again, give it some whiskey business, turn the heat down to low, and we're gonna cook this with the lid on again for about 15 to 20 minutes until all that liquid has fully cooked into the polenta. And then we're gonna really jazz things up. Add in half a stick of butter. I said it's good, I didn't say it was necessarily healthy. Shake in some fresh Parmesan cheese. I am saying Parmesan because this is not actual Italian Parmigiano Reggiano, but use whatever cheese you'd like. Season that up with some salt and pepper. Exact ingredients as always will be down below in the description and on the website. And the last addition here will be about a quarter cup of sour cream. Mascarpone or cream cheese um, would be totally fine as well. Give that a nice whisk until it is all combined, smooth, luscious, dripping from your whisk, gleaming with cheese and butter. Oh man, this is so good. So we're gonna plate this up with some big spoonfuls of our creamy succulent polenta. Helps to use a warm plate for this so that polenta does not seize up, but that's only if you're having company, I guess. Add down a short rib or two and spoon over some of that red wine and beef stock reduction. The only thing this is gonna need for me is a little sprinkling more of that Parmesan cheese so you know what's in it. And of course, this being dishing out, we are obligated to garnish with some sliced green onions. There you have it. Braised short ribs with Parmesan polenta. So the elephant in the room here is the three to three and a half hour cooking time, but if you've got a lazy Saturday or Sunday afternoon or you wanna impress some guests, I think this would be a great go-to dish. That polenta is so creamy, it's unbelievable. The cheese and that sour cream really help to cut through the uh, bland, otherwise flavor of the polenta. No problems with this bone here. It didn't even wanna stay attached. You can see that beef is just shredding and pulling apart. Oh man, so moist and succulent. I'm only using a knife really to help me scoop everything together there. Could cut this with the side of that fork. Oh man, the wine is so rich. Cheese is just lovely in the polenta. I, I just, there's really no words here. You gotta give it a try. Let us know if you do. As always, thanks for watching. Now, go make something delicious.